Hey everybody. So we're going to talk about the divergence test or what's also known as the nth term test. So we wish to prove a convenient necessary condition for a series to converge. And that is that if a series converges, then its sequence of terms goes to zero. And another way to put this is if the sequence of terms fails to go to zero, then the series diverges. So we need a lemma on shifted sequences to make our job easier. So suppose we have a sequence Sn and it converges to some limiting value L. Now what we're going to do is take another copy of this sequence and just shift it to the right one unit. In other words, what we're looking at is the sequence S sub n minus 1. And you'll notice that by replacing n by n minus 1, this argument, uh, we've basically shifted the graph to the right one unit. So what happens is it's clear that by shifting the gra graph um, horizontally, you don't change any horizontal asymptote. So the punchline is that both of these sequences have the same limiting behavior. One converges if and only if the other converges, and they have to both converge to the same limit in that case. So back to our main theme. Suppose the series with terms a sub n converges to the limiting value L. So by definition, what that means is the limiting value of the partial sums converges to L, where a partial sum looks like this. Here's the nth partial sum, where you add up the terms a1 through a n. The previous partial sums, sigma n minus 1, would look like this. And we'll notice that if you just subtract those two terms, you're going to get sigma n minus sigma n minus 1 on the left side, and you're just going to get a n on the right side. And this shouldn't come as a shock. I mean, another way of saying this is if you just take the previous partial sum and add a n, you get to the new partial sum. So since this is true, it follows that if we want to analyze the limiting value of a sub n, we can just look at the limiting value of the difference of sigma n and sigma n minus 1. So we have a limit law that says we can take the difference of those limits. And remember that we've assumed that the series converges to L, so the limiting value of the partial sum sigma n has to equal L. And we just proved a lemma on shifted sequence a moment ago, so this limiting value of sigma n minus 1 has to be the same limiting value L. And therefore, the limiting value of a n as n goes to infinity has to be 0. So here is our result, and um, we can phrase it this way. If a series converges, then its sequence of terms converges to 0. So let's explore this, because uh, this can cause some confusion with um, students when they first start learning about infinite series. This is an implication that goes one way, but not the other. So let's flesh out the details. Suppose we could draw a Venn diagram and look at all the series whose terms go to zero. And we had a collection here of all the convergent series. And suppose that the series with terms a n converges. So of course it lives here by definition. Well, we just proved that whenever a series converges, then its terms must go to zero. So actually all these series that converge have to live inside here. So our Venn diagram has to look something like this. The convergent series are a subset of the series whose terms go to zero. And we'll put this all in a bigger context with uh, all infinite series surrounding them. So here are three examples of convergent series. Um, we've looked at these in previous videos, and you don't need to be too familiar with them. Um, you can just accept that they converge to values 2 pi squared over 6 and pi over 4 respectively. They are convergent series, but the thing to notice here is that since they live inside the collection of all convergent series, they automatically live inside of the collection of series whose terms go to zero. And in fact, you can look at the terms in these examples and verify for yourself that the limiting value of the nth term in each case is zero. So the picture fits. Now, if you looked outside the set of convergent series, then of course you're looking by definition at the divergent series. So here's a question. Is there anything that lives inside this ring here? What would such a series look like? It would have to diverge, and yet its sequence of terms would have to go to zero. So that's another way to ask the question. Is there a series whose terms go to zero and yet diverges? And in a previous video, we've seen an example of this as well, the harmonic series. 
um, we proved that the harmonic series diverges to infinity, and yet you can look at the sequence of terms and verify for yourself that the limiting value of the terms is zero. So this, in fact, is a series that lives inside this ring here. Now, a big takeaway from this example is the lesson that just knowing that the sequence of terms goes to zero is not enough to know the series converges. You can never use the fact by itself that the sequence of terms goes to zero to be able to claim that the series converges. It's a bit like asking this. You could say, look, if you live inside this ring, are you a convergent series? And that's clearly false because to be convergent, you have to live all the way in here and it's totally possible to live inside the original ring and not be convergent. So you just have to remember that if you know the sequence of terms goes to zero by itself, that's just not enough information to prove that a series converges. Okay, so let's uh, look at one last thought here. If the terms of a series don't go to zero, then you're living out in this outer ring. And of course, if you're living in that outer ring, you're definitely not living in this uh, collection of series that converge. So what's the snappy way to put this? If the sequence of terms of a series fails to converge to zero, then the series diverges. So this is a convenient test. Sometimes um, this is why it's called the divergence test. Sometimes you're able to look at a series and just immediately recognize that the terms don't go to zero, and then therefore it automatically diverges. There's no use in trying to prove it converges because it can't possibly converge. So here's an example of a series. Its limiting value of terms is one, and that isn't zero. And here's another series, and its um, sequence of terms doesn't converge at all. It bounces back and forth between one and negative one, so the limiting value of the nth term just doesn't exist. And here's an example of a series um, where the limiting value of the terms is negative one, but negative one's not zero. So it has a sequence of terms that fails to go to zero. So the lesson here is that all of these have to live in this outer ring and they all diverge. Um, let's just point out here that the first one diverges to infinity. The second one is just divergent. It doesn't actually diverge to infinity or negative infinity. It's partial sums wobble between one and zero. And then the last one actually diverges to negative infinity. So um, you can have all sorts of divergent behavior, but the point is they all diverge out here in this outer ring. If the sequence of terms does not go to zero, the sequence definitely diverges.